What's going on guys? This is your coach, friend, and mentor, Scotty Hobbs. I have a meeting to be to in like five minutes, so I'm gonna make this quick. But I opened up the, my Facebook this morning and and you know, as it, you see where you put your status, it says, what are you thinking? And so I wanna share some thoughts with you guys having to do with money is important, okay? Now money is important and I really, really get that. Money gives you the option, the ability, the choices to, to spend your time how you want, who you want to spend your time with, et cetera, et cetera. I will tell you money is important. I understand that because it gives you the ability to make those choices. Your career is important. I understand that 100% that your career is important. I think it's more important that many more important that many of you guys think it is. And a lot of times we tie career to great benefits, great package, great hours, all of that stuff, okay? It is important, but the one thing that I have learned over the past 7 years is that you must have a joy and a love and a passion for doing what you do because if you do not then one day whether it's three years five years seven years ten years twenty years thirty years from now if it's not something that you truly enjoy doing you're going to just be working a job no matter what career it is no matter how much money you make in that career and I know many people choose a career choose a path, make a decision based on the package you'll have or the benefits you'll have or the recognition you'll have as a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is, a school teacher, whatever it is. Many of us have chosen careers based on that. And But if it's solely on that, how much money you'll make or any of that stuff, what I can tell you is years from now, it could be sooner for others, longer away from up for others. If that is the case, if it's only for the money, you're going to feel like it's a job and you're going to fall out of love with it because you never were in love with it in the first place. And I've seen too many people in life jump from one thing to another. I'm not talking about business. I'm talking about jobs, schooling, and whatnot. And I'm going to talk to you guys about this and be honest with you about it because I've faced that. I've been through it. So I hope that through my experience, I can help somebody avoid that in the future, whether you're, you're in high school, you're in college right now, you're just starting your first career, or whether you're 40 years old or not. Because if you're 40, you still have 25 years left in a career. And I believe that you should love what you do, okay? So I mean, first of all, when I when I went out to to start my career going into school, like I wanted to be an orthodontics. And I had this saying in my mind, I want to be orthodontics because, you know, I had headgear. I had the whole thing, like the big headpiece goes over your head. I had all of that stuff. And I thought it was pretty cool that that orthodontist was able to fix my teeth and make them look straight and and that helped me out. So I was like, I'm gonna be orthodontics. And, and I decided that uh, in my early 20s, going out of high school into college, I wanted to be orthodontics. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, guys, I chose orthodontics not because I was like, I'm gonna be in love with this job. Like this is absolutely what I wanna do is, is cement wires into people's mouths and make their smile better. That Like that's cool and it helped me, but it's not what I really want to do. I really chose it because I knew that it would be a great income. It would be a greater income than just being a worker, um, working in a fast food place, working in a factory. So I chose that path. I quickly found out that I did not love that process. I did not love the school classes. I was not in love with it at all. So I, luckily I walked away from that early in my college years. Next, I chose dental lab and I'm going to talk to you about this. I mean, I'm artistic, like, my whole youth, I was spent drawing, painting, doing scratch board, uh, building projects out of cardboard. I loved creating and building stuff and, and all of that. So I was like, I told myself, like, okay, maybe not orthodontics. I'm going to be a dental lab technician because I can create, like, I can use my artistic ability and love to create teeth and match colors and make it aesthetically pleasing and I can change people's lives that way. But guys, it wasn't truly about that. It was because my cousin made close to a six-figure income in our small town of Idaho Falls as a dental lab technician. So I made the decision to go to dental lab school so I could have a six-figure income as a dental lab technician. That's why I went to school for that. And what I want you guys to understand is I went to that. I learned. I applied myself. I excelled in school, and I was one of the best in my class. And as I walked out, finished school as a dental lab technician, I was the first one to get a job. But guys, what I want you guys to understand is I was just working a job and eventually, after a few months, I did not look forward to it. It wasn't something that I was passionate about. And I knew that my, like I was good, I had great skills at it, but I chose that path of dental lab technician because of the income that I thought was possible for me with dental lab. So what did I learn from this? It is what I learned is that 
like even though I was the best coming out of my class and the be first one to get a job is that I was just working a job. I was doing something that I didn't look forward to. I hated Sunday evenings because I meant I had to mentally prepare to go back to work on Sunday morning, okay? Or on Monday morning. So Sundays were not a day of rest for me, which is what this should be. It was a day of worrying about getting back to work on Monday morning. So guys, I wanna talk to you guys about being a Team Beach Body Coach. I'm gonna be uh, as honest and straightforward as I can. I love what I do as a Team Beach Body Coach. Here's the thing that's more important. I loved it far, far, far before I ever got paid to become a Beach Body Coach. I started sharing Beach Body, sharing P90X, sharing Shakeology, sharing Insanity an entire year before I ever became a Team Beach Body Coach and I never made a dime. But I did it and I looked forward to it. I remember walking up the stairs of my job my job to get to my and I wanted to like wait for break and wait for lunch so I could open up my my computer open up my email and see somebody tell me dude I went from a size 12 to a size 8 like this is so awesome I was in love with that okay and I, I guys I started a blog it sucked but I started one I made a transformation video it's not that great but I made one and I started talking about it on Facebook and I, I started a Facebook group like a, a challenge group before challenge groups ever existed and it grew to 200 people and I was excited about that group and we did P90X we did insanity we did running we did biking any kind of exercise CrossFit whatever I didn't care what you did I just wanted you to be working out and that was my passion that was my exciting part of it and guys what what happened is I could not stop thinking about the work I was doing helping people with P90X insanity and getting healthier and more fit in my mind I was telling myself and I had a friend tell me this if I could only like make a living doing this that would be my dream job that would be living in my purpose and living in my passion so guys before I ever became a coach I I began, I, I don't, can't say I discovered my purpose because I don't believe I've still under, fully understood and discovered my purpose, but I began to find my purpose and I found something that I could do on the side. I, could, I found something I could do on the side that was a great place to put my energy other, instead of drinking and playing Call of Duty and watching endless hours of Chicago Fire and all these amazing shows that I think are great. Like I found something where I could begin to develop in my passion. And I began to, and I was working a full-time job, and I planned to work a full-time job when I when I was doing this. But I I began working out. I began. I continued learning to read books. And guys, I've read over 400 books over the past seven years. When I started officially as a coach, I wanted to make some money. I'm going to be straightforward with you guys. I wanted to make some money, and I think that is 100% okay. But guys, remember this. I was working 12 hours a day, almost every Saturday on top of that, and I had to send my wife to work at nights. We put the kids at one point in an actual daycare, and then later on, the neighbors took care of them and we paid them as a babysitter. That was something that I had never, ever imagined doing and having to do as I raised my family. But the day, I think this is what I want you guys to understand, the day that I signed up as a coach, I knew and I made the choice that money would never, ever, 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 ever be the sole motivator. It would be the love and the passion that I have for helping people grow and to find the courage to live their purpose while living a healthier, more fulfilling life. My income would be a direct reflection of the number of lives that I could help change, not a reflection of how many cells I could make how much money I could make, how my income grew, or how my income didn't grow. It would never, ever be a reflection of that. So why can you see me always showing up excited? Because I'm working in that purpose and that passion and learning to discover that every single day. So guys, every single day I wake up, I am grateful. A, oh, I was almost Spanish, abundamente. <laughs> uh, a Spanish word there. I am extremely grateful that Team Beachbody is even willing to give me anything at all. Like Carl Deichler, Team Beachbody, did not have to open the Team Beachbody network. They did not have to start paying people to share their products and programs because they were doing that before Team Beachbody happened. The truth of the matter is they could have kept being an infomercial company. They could have transitioned like they are into uh, digital social media and everything that they're doing without Team Beachbody coaches. Yes, we bring this special magic to it and I understand that 100%, but I wake up and I remember that I am grateful for Team Beachbody and that they're even willing to do this. I am grateful. 
I will every day remember. If I ever get in a place where I'm not feeling gratitude, I'm going to remember that first time I made $49, even though I worked my butt off. I will always remember that. I would, and the thing about this, guys, is I will always share these programs and I will always do these programs, whether or not the coach opportunity, whether or not Beachbody pays me or not, because I want to help transform people's health, transform people's lives, and I would do it without the compensation plan. And I want you guys to understand that 100% about me and the people that are wanting to be a part of Team Beachbody, that is something that you must have in mind if you want to be a part of this tribe. So my success or the success of my coaches, I want you guys to understand this. I will mentor, will never, ever be determined by how much money they make, what rank they are, how much money they make or do not make. That's not the culture that I want. I want my coaches and our team to look back at the end of each year or the end of each day and be proud for the number of people that they helped and create a healthier habits and achieve their health and fitness goals in their own life and in the lives of their children and the people that are watching them. After seven years, guys, it's my purpose and I'm living in it. Now, here's what I, I believe many people miss the mark and I gotta end this, I, I try to make this quickly, but I, um, this is where I think many people miss the mark. It is hard. Too many people compare themselves to other people and get distracted by what is not important. Everyone, you have to understand that everybody's on a different path and every single person has a different timeline. They have their own timeline, remember that. You included. So you, like, you have a reason and purpose for existing. I have one. We are each in the process of, of uncovering, unveiling, and discovering what our purpose is. And I will be the first person to admit that I am understanding what mine is, but I don't fully grasp the bigger picture yet. I've only been discovering and unveiling and unraveling this over the past seven years. That is this much time in compared to our life. That is this much time in compared to the entire eternity of, of our entire existence, guys. And what I want you guys to understand is, let me just explain it like this. You are important to the world. I'm important to the world. And since that is a fact, we know that we will each face obstacles. Like there are stories and people that you will remember. If you think back in your past of the people that made a difference, the people that impacted your life, the people that, that truly made a difference in your life, they're out there and you remember them in your past, in your history, because they were overcomers. They were overcomers, remember that. We are going to face obstacles. That is a given. And before we can fully, and we're especially we're gonna face obstacles before we can fully understand our bigger purpose because we live in a universe that has two sides, okay? We have light and dark, we have up and down, we have hot and cold, we have happy and sad. Guys, we are all a part of this one big world, this one universe, and as you strive to find your purpose, you're going to encounter resistance and sometimes at an unbearable, unbearable levels. This resistance is Satan's way to keep you from living your God-given purpose. It's here for a reason. It's, it's here for a reason. So stop blaming people, companies, products, situations. It's Satan here to keep you from living your purpose. You have to understand that. That resistance is there for a reason. And guys, the closer you guys get to realizing your full purpose, the stronger that resistance is gonna get. The closer you get to breaking through and understanding what that is and how to live in it, the stronger the resistance is gonna get. So grow some thick skin, begin to grow that. Surround yourself with people that are not gonna complain about life, that are gonna encourage you guys to overcome and to lean in to the storm because that's how you're gonna get through, that's how you're gonna learn, that's how you're gonna get grow, that's how you're gonna make a difference in people's lives, that's how people are gonna be impacted by you, that's how your end legacy, when they read your I just spaced the word, when they read your about your life, when this life ends, they're gonna say good things about you. It's not gonna be about how much money you made, how many accolades you had, and all of that stuff, okay? So the one thing that I want you guys to know, like I, sometimes I can't sleep at night, and I'm up at night, late, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, tr I'm praying, trying to understand, for example, last night, is this far too many of you, you guys, my friends, give up on this growth stage where you're supposed to lean in to the obstacles, lean into the opposition. The tests become too powerful for you guys, you're getting overwhelmed, your will falters, and so does your faith. Many of you guys are giving up just before you're about to break through and discover what your true God-given purpose is. And if you, I can just promise you guys, if you persevere, you will experience the greatest joy in the world. And it has nothing, let me repeat, nothing 
absolutely nothing to do with how much money you can make. So guys, here's what I, here's my challenge to you guys as I leave you guys today. Hold tight to your values, hold tight to your morals and know that one day this world will end. What do you want to be known for? How did you serve the world? What gift did you give to the world? Did you develop the talents that God gave you and not worried about the talents that other, God gave other people? Did you serve others? Did you uplift others? If in any action, belief or mindset does not align with what you want to be remembered for, change. Change it. As you face the trials and obstacles that you guys are designed, that are designed to make you grow into the person that you need to be, and live your purpose, remember one thing, you can have anything you want in life as long as you do not hurt other people in order to get what you want. I love you guys. If this helps somebody today, please share it with anybody, anybody out there. And by the way, we just finished day 12 of 22 Minute Hardcore. Love you guys. Have an incredible day and let's crush it.